that we're very fortunate today to have as our keynote speaker Professor Judge Mervyn King from Johannesburg and I know that he will share as part of his presentation some of his memories of working with Nelson Mandela. And Mervyn has been a friend of the NHS in London for the past few years. In 2011 we invited him to speak at a conference we were holding on inclusion. I know from my experience of having been a non-exec director in the NHS that um, it is an issue that is quite challenging for boards and so we needed to find someone that board members would take seriously and who, who more serious than Mervyn King. And to see the progress that we've made on that agenda, the inclusion agenda, you'll find in the, your packs details of the Capital People programme which um, shows you the work that's happening across the capital in that area. But after the fall of apartheid in South Africa, Nelson Mandela asked Mervyn to chair a commission looking at how corporations could better meet the needs, interests and expectations of all stakeholders, not just the minority and not just shareholders. His recommendations in the Three King reports became the international standard for governance in the 21st century and demonstrate how governance can be used as a device to bring about greater equity and fairness in society. And at, the, and at the close of that event in 2011, NHS London was invited by Mervyn to take part in the International Integrated Reporting Council's pilot programme on integrated reporting, and Mervyn chairs the IIRC. And we have learned many lessons from being involved in the pilot, and indeed several organisations in South London are now taking the lead in integrating their reports and thinking along IIRC lines. So when we look at the issues of trust and transparency and how we can retain and regain the trust of all stakeholders, staff as well as service users, the links are clear. But President Mandela's legacy has even greater resonance and I think this will become apparent when we hear from Elizabeth who will be talking about fear, failure and forgiveness in the NHS. Because fear and failure stalk the corridors of the NHS and the NHS can be an unforgiving place. And with an entity such as the National Health Service, even when we are doing our very best and achieving amazing results every day, we will always be betraying someone. Betrayal violates trust. It may offend people's core values and beliefs about how others should behave and provokes strong emotions. In the NHS, you'll be leading change, disrupting the status quo, and this will bring you into conflict with a whole range of psychological contracts, those unwritten expectations that people have of you, whether they be staff member, service user, patient, colleague, regulator, taxpayer, or minister. You vowed to keep this hospital open. You said I could have surgery. You promised I could work part-time. You said you could save her. You said the NHS would always be free at the point of need. And so even when you feel you are making the right decisions in the best interests of the service overall, betrayal like beauty will be in the eye of the beholder. So it is important that as leaders we can understand and accept this, as otherwise the fear of being seen as a betrayer can cause us inner conflict, adding emotional stress and clouding our judgment when we have to make those difficult decisions. Understanding this dynamic helps us to appreciate complex feelings and increases our ability to communicate, helping our staff and service users to understand our challenges as we help them meet theirs. And how does this connect us back to Nelson Mandela in South Africa? We need only look at the truth and reconciliation hearings in South Africa where it was recognised that the country needed a process that allowed them to move on. As Archbishop Desmond Tutu said, to forgive is not just to be altruistic, it is the best form of self-interest. And in recognising the pressures we place on ourselves and the difficult balancing act we perform in balancing budgets, meeting targets and delivering care with compassion and dignity, perhaps we can be more forgiving of ourselves. One of my favourite quotes is from the 13th century poet Rumi, who wrote, Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, there is a field, I'll meet you there. Well, today this is our field. And in it we have space and time to think 
about the issues that matter and how we can retain and regain the trust of all our service users.